Hello, I'm Craig Summerall. Thanks for joining me again as we continue reading the book, Monday Morning Choices. Uh, today we continue with the adversity choice. Mired or motivated? The difference between successful people and average people is that successful people make a, a conscious choice to spend their energy attacking the problem and moving forward. Average people choose to spend their energy complaining, justifying, and blaming others for the problems. Perhaps you've found that this strategy doesn't help anyone. In fact, complaining drains the energy needed to begin working through the adversity. Everyone faces adversity. No one is immune. Our gut check comes when things go wrong, an unexpected event that hits us squarely between the eyes. After the shock of an unexpected event, we have to make a choice. We can choose to become mired in the quicksand of self-pity, uh, immobilized, stuck, and uh, unable to move ahead. Or we can make the choice to do what is necessary to attack and overcome adversity. <clears throat> if asked for examples of people who have, have attacked and overcome adversity, many would probably mention Lance Armstrong or Christopher Reeve. Both are great role models because they chose to avoid the muck of self-pity and to go on with life, becoming a voice for many others who were facing similar crises. But look around your organization or circle of friends. You probably don't have to look far to find examples of people who have chosen to attack and conquer personal adversity. They may not get the national attention, money, or resources like others, but their challenges are just as dramatic. One of the most positive and enthusiastic people I know is a friend named Melissa. When you meet Melissa, she appears to have it all. A terrific personality, good looks, she's smart, fun, and successful. What is not apparent is that Melissa has survived and conquered major adversity that would have destroyed most people. Eight years ago, Melissa was a homemaker taking care of her three-year-old autistic child and a newborn, a challenging full-time job to say the least. <clears throat> then one day, without warning, Melissa's life suddenly changed. Without any explanation, her husband walked in and said he was leaving. He walked out the door, never turned back, leaving Melissa and the children with the house and the bills while he moved in with one of Melissa's good friends. Melissa's world shattered. Losing her husband and her friend and being left to pick up the pieces without financial or emotional support was enough to handle. <clears throat> On top of that, she did not have a job because she had left a bright and promising career four years earlier so she could stay at home and have a family. The most logical and easiest choice would have been for Melissa to become mired in self-pity, pity, bitterness, and hatred over the unfair situation that had shattered her world. And who would blame her? Some say adversity grinds you down. Others say it polishes you up. It depends on what, you, what you're made of and how you choose to attack the adversity that comes your way. Adversity polished Melissa up. She chose to pick up the shattered pieces one at a time and continue to move forward with her life. The trip has not been easy, but she would not allow adversity to destroy her, her children, or their collective dreams. Today, Melissa is a successful graphic designer for Cornerstone Leadership Institute, Institute and is a tremendous inspiration to me. Melissa chose to do the best she could with an unfair situation. Choice is power. When confronted with adversity, we can choose to see the positive alternatives and rise from the ashes to become even better and stronger than we were before. Here's to making the right choices when adversity comes your way. Have a great week.